Welcome to a video on matrices and systems of linear equations for my principles of algorithms class. Uh, this material kind of uh, mirrors the what is part of what is covered in chapter 28 of the Introduction to Algorithms textbook. And we are looking at, as the title implies, systems of linear equations. So at some point you probably took a math class where you did these, but we want to, to refresh your memory just in case. So this is a system of linear equations. We have multiple variables, x1, x2, and x3, and they are combined in an equation of where each term is linear. So they're not squared or cubed or anything like that. Each one has, is raised to the power of zero, and then it has a coefficient um, in front of it. Then the whole thing is set equal to some other constant value. I've picked integers here, but there's nothing that says that that has to be the case. So this particular system is, is well formed. There are three unknowns here, are three different variables, and there are three equations. If you have more equations than unknowns, you have an, an over, over constrained system and it's quite possible there is no solution. If you have fewer equations than unknowns, it is under constrained and there are generally an infinite, well there will always be an infinite number of solutions to it. So the question is how do we find a solution to this? And perhaps you remember this, but we can walk through the steps that you go through. So what I want to do is I want to use this first equation and combine it with that one and then with that one in such a way that I remove the x1 variable. Because given one of these equations, I can't really do anything. I have three unknowns. If I want to actually solve something, I need to get down to just one variable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to combine this equation with each of these to get rid of x1. So how do we do that? Well, if I multiply this equation by 2, this coefficient here becomes an 8, and then I can subtract this equation from that equation, and when I do that, that will disappear. Okay. And so when I multiply this by 2, I get a negative 4. Minus 5 minus negative 4 is a minus 1. When I multiply this by 2, I get a negative 4, and so I have 1 minus negative 4, which gives me 5. When I multiply this by 2, I get 20. 6 minus 20 is negative 14. To get rid of the first term in this equation, I can either, we can either view it as I multiply this equation by 2 or I divide this equation by 2. I'm, I'm going to take the idea that I'm always manipulating this equation. Uh, so I divide this one by 2, and then I add, because they have opposite signs. And so, whoops. So this goes away. When I multiply this by 2, I get a negative 4. I add that in, and I get a 3. I get another negative 4 here. This becomes a negative 6. And then dividing by this by 2 and adding, we get Okay, so that's my, my next step in the process. And now I need to combine these two to get one of them down to a single variable. So if I multiply this equation by 3 and then I add them, that goes away. When I multiply this by 3, I get a 15. I add the 15 to the negative 6 and I get 9. When I multiply this equation by 3, I get 42, negative 42. And the negative 42 plus 8 should give me minus 34. Um, and at this point, I have an equation that I can actually solve for x3. So x3 is equal to minus 34 over 9. Once I get a nice value for x3, I can plug that back up into here. I can then take this constant, subtract it from both sides, and I am left with something I can solve for x2. Once I have x2 and x3, I can substitute those up into here, and then take that value, subtract it, divide by 4, and get my value for x1, and I have a full solution to this equation. So this is the process that, that we, uh, what we want to do. Um, this is the the way that I'm doing this here is actually referred to as Gaussian elimination. Uh, we'll come back in the next video and we'll write 
some code that does Gaussian elimination. The book does not run you through Gaussian elimination. Uh, it uses a, a better method, and we'll talk about why it's better as well. Also, when we do this on the computer, I'm not going to represent my equations this way. I'm going to go off the observation that I can write this as AX equals Y, where A is a matrix, and then X and Y are vectors. And, well, what are they? So the A matrix is these coefficients here. So it's 4, minus 2, minus 2, 8, minus 5, 1, negative 2, 7, negative 2. The x vector is x subscript 1, x subscript 2, x subscript 3, and of course my program decided that I wanted everything capitalized, which I don't. So that is my x vector, it's what I'm solving for, and I want that to be equal to my y vector, which is just the coefficients from the other side. 10, 6, 3. Okay, this is how I'm going to represent it in the computer as, as matrices and vectors. And of course, if you remember how you do matrix multiplication, 4 is multiplied by x1, negative 2 by x2, negative 2 by x3, and then that gives us our 10 over here, that is this equation. And then the second row of A multiplied out gives us our, third, our second equation, and the third row gives us our, our third equation. So this system here is identical to this system here. It's just a different way for us to write it out, and this happens to be a way for us to write it out that is much happier to, to work with on the computer. Uh, so we'll come back next time in the next video, and we'll look at how we can use this representation and do something called Gaussian elimination to make it so that the computer can, can solve this problem.